is the gospel message, and I just pray that you will open your heart and let it change your life. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God to declare his glory and reveal his majesty. The problem is that one of the angels of God wanted to be higher than God himself and therefore this angel was cast out of heaven, becoming the fallen angel, or as we know him, the devil. One day in the Garden of Eden, there was Adam and Eve, the first humans, and the fallen angel appeared to them in the form of a serpent and tempted them to sin against God, and they did, causing mankind to fall. God was angered and he casted Adam and Eve from the garden and told the serpent that he was going to send one who would crush the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. You have to understand that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and because of that we all deserve an eternal separation from God which is hell. But God loved the world so much that he became man and that man's name was Jesus Christ. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life by fulfilling all the requirements of the law in order to become the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was spat on, mocked, and beaten, and people even gambled over his clothes. He was whipped to the point where his flesh was torn from his body and a crown of thorns was crushed into his skull. He was then forced to carry his cross to the site where he would be nailed to it. Jesus then used his last bit of energy after hanging on the cross for several hours to say, It is finished. And then he commended his spirit to the Father. Jesus was then buried. But three days later, he rose from the grave, conquering sin and death. Don't you see? God passed the law that would cause the Jews to sentence his incarnate form to death. The law was the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ and allow us to see our need for a savior. The law was a shadow of good things to come. The promise came before the law. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This is our savior. Now whosoever believes in Jesus Christ as your savior by trusting in his life, death, burial, and resurrection will be saved. He will take on your sin, and you will take on his imputed righteousness. This is the love of God, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Call out to him today. Confess him as your Lord. When you trust only in the blood of Jesus Christ to be your salvation from sin, you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise as a down payment of guarantee of eternal life until the day of deliverance. The Holy Spirit is the seed of God which is planted in you by Jesus Christ through faith in Him. This is what allows you to be presented before a holy God as blameless. The Holy Spirit then baptizes you into the body of Christ, making you part of the ecclesia, meaning the church or the called out ones. Your heart will be circumcised and you will be sanctified, meaning you will be set apart from your flesh. We are eternally secure in him because he who begins a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And daily we will work out our salvation with reverent fear and rejoice and trembling as we conform to the image of Jesus Christ. We become disciples of Jesus and that discipleship journey will look different for everyone. So do not compare yourself to other Christians, but only to Jesus Christ because he is the only standard we strive for. Repent today, that is to turn towards Jesus. Do not let man deceive you into thinking that you must drop all your sins before you come to Jesus. Jesus wants you to come just as you are because he came to call the sinners to repentance, not the righteous. Those who are given to him by God and seek him, he shall in no way cast out. Stop clinging on to the branches of religion and instead come to know the true vine, that is Jesus Christ, because without him, there is no victory, there is no deliverance, and there is no healing. We can do nothing without him. He is our savior from the penalty of sin. He is our savior from the power of sin. And eventually he will be our savior from the presence of sin. He himself took on the penalty of sin your sin, that you would find forgiveness and redemption from your sin today. 
He desires a relationship with you, and heaven is waiting to rejoice when you turn to him. Receive the free gift of salvation today through faith in Jesus Christ, and enter through the narrow gate that leads to eternal life with your heavenly Father. Amen. When I was broken in spirit and soul, there was no one around who would love me. Stumbling in darkness, fear had me bound. There was only one who could see me. Above his name there is no other name The one who is eternally the same There is no other name The first, the last, beginning and the end he was the king who made the common man his friend. There is no other name 
Let every tongue proclaim and sing the name of Jesus. Magnify and praise the name of Jesus. No name of Jesus, Jesus, Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, He created all with his own hands and yet the smallest need he understands there is no other name the one who said I am the great I am and then he gave himself the sacrifice for man. There is no other name. Let every tongue proclaim and sing the name of Jesus. Magnify and praise the name of Jesus. No Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. How is everyone this lovely Thursday evening, October 13th, 2022? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wasn't it just the first? What just happened to two weeks? My goodness, time sure is flying by. Whether you're having fun or not. How is everybody? Can you hear me okay? Looks like you can. Praise the Lord. I don't have to fight with that tonight. <laughs> okay. Let's begin with prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of King Jesus, Lord, thanking you for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship this evening, Lord, and to consider these things that are spoken this evening. Father, we pray and ask for your anointing to be upon this message and that you bless the listener, Lord, or whatever you would have them to receive from this. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for those who are infirmed, shut in, going through the fire right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray for those, Lord, undergird them, lift them up. May they feel your presence, Lord, and know that you are with them. You will never leave them nor forsake them if they are your child. And Father, for those who have not yet received you, may you open their eyes that they might see, hear, perceive, and receive the gospel and be converted. In Jesus' name we pray our family members, our loved ones, our co-workers, and all of those that we can minister to, Lord. We ask for that in Jesus' name. And Lord, if we are not the one, we pray that a witness be sent that they can hear in Jesus' name. We thank you for all these things, Lord, in advance. By your spirit, Lord, these things will be accomplished, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Thank you, Lord. And everyone that agree with that prayer said, amen, so be it, or may it be so. Oh, whatever you want to say in Jesus' name. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. How is everyone? I almost messed everything up. <laughs> uh, back here in the control room, there's a little too many buttons, and you can get in trouble if you forget what you're doing or where you left off to I was like, uh, how do I do that again? <laughs> Oops. Uh, I pressed live before I figured that out. Well, I figured it out. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I stumbled across what was needed to pull it back together. Let me say shout out to everybody out there in the chat. I only have a few people with me right now. Praise the Lord. That's okay. Many of you that listen later. Thank you so very much. Praise the Lord. I just pray you be blessed. God soldier Dylan. Thank you for joining me. Celine. Thank you for joining me. I started in the wrong place. I hope I don't miss anybody. Spider monkey was first. Shout out to you, spider monkey. Thank you so very much for joining me. And Toph. Thank you for joining me. Praise the Lord. I hope I didn't miss anybody. It's only a handful of people and I could mess that up too. Okay, now, if I miss anybody, put it in all caps and I'll give you a shout out. I'm sorry. Let's see now. Where were we? Oh, yes. I was in the middle of extolling the glory of our magnificent King of Kings and Lord of Lords last week when it was time to end the podcast because I tried to keep it to an hour because it's the middle of the week for folk. It's already approaching 11 o'clock on the East Coast. So it's even later in some other parts of the world. Out here on the West Coast, we just we just get warmed up. We just finished our dinner. Maybe we're going to read or learn some things or do whatever we do before we retire. So it's still a little bit early for us right now. But I want to be considerate of the people who it's not early for. Let's go to our opening scripture which is the foundation for this podcast, before I forget. <laughs> yes, I, I think I've done that once or twice. We went to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1. Start at verse 2. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. 
For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you be also of the consolation. Thank you, Lord. So be it, so be it, so be it. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Woo! Yes, that suffering thing, don't we know? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. And we're like, what is this for, Lord? <laughs> What is this for? And could you ease it up just a little bit or maybe a lot of it, depending on what you're going through? Oh, yes, I must confess. I do know about that suffering thing. But we can witness to others and we can share how the Lord got us through and what great things the Lord has done. And we can comfort one another because we know. Because we've been through it. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I don't want to get lost in my own notes, which I have been known to do. Give me a second here. I'm still adjusting to this whole notes thing. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I see where I'm at. I think I was going on my rant about, yeah, the, the silly things people say, right? The silly things that people say about Christ. And mm, sadly, too many people act like bobblehead dolls and just go, mm -hmm, yep, that's right. Amen, brother. And when it's totally wrong, just totally wrong. And they have people believing in a feudal Christ. And it's so sad. It's so tragic. Because it's not the Jesus of this Bible. And I was talking about how. He is soul sufficient. S O L E. Soul sufficient. I have a meme somewhere. I'm getting them together, y'all. Remember now, I told you I'm I'm still recovering from some other stuff, let alone Microsoft's blue screen of death. Yes, they had got me a few months back. I haven't recovered from that yet. I'm still trying to find stuff from that and get it all organized again. And that stuff takes time. You ever get mail stacked up? And junk you got to go through. The shit is just threw away when it came in. And now you got to go through. <laughs> you gotta, wait a minute. I got to separate. I, I know I have a stack. I'm a stacker. So I have important papers in one place. And then junk mail and stuff. And then I have the periodical stuff. that I, That's the one that really gets me. The junk is easy. Because that's in one stack. But it's the stuff that you kind of need to read. Before you decide if you're going to toss it. Ugh. And then it gets backed up. My grandpappy was right. It's easier to keep up. Then to catch up, okay? Woo, if you know, you know. So you start going through stuff and you do, you get your clean, getting, well, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing with when your computer crashes. And now I had to go back and find all this stuff and get it reorganized and put it somewhere that if this crashes again, it won't matter. I did have stuff backed up, thankfully, but I hid it for myself. Okay, where was I anyway? So, <laughs> the silly things that people say about Christ. Okay. And one of the things, and, and see, they, I, you know, I know they agents know what they're doing now. You know, the players on Team Satan, they know what they're doing. That they, they slithered on into the church and pretend to be one of us when they're not of us. <laughs> okay. Those people, they'll say things, but sadly, Christians, will be in agreement with this junk. They Jedi mind trick folk into believing this garbage when it's blasphemy against the Lord. So let's, let me go on my rant while I got a little time left here. The silly things that people say, like greasy grace. I don't even know what to say. Give me one second here. Calling the Lord's grace greasy. 
I can't. I don't even have the words. I remember the first time I heard that I was furious. I was furious. Ooh, I said, how dare you, you blaspheming devil. Call the Lord's grace greasy. Evil, evil, evil. And they'll have some Christians that don't know their Bible. And all in that religious spirit. Ooh, I wish we could crucify that sucker forever. That religious spirit is wicked no oh, yes that's right that's greasy grace amen brother no it ain't it ain't right his grace is not greasy his grace is sufficient let's go there before i forget oh uh, hebrew 725 i can't with these oh yeah, we'll be bouncing all over the scripture tonight. Thanking the Lord for what he has done. That he put this Bible together. I remember I used to go, well, why is that passage here when I was younger, when I was a child? Why was that passage here? And why didn't God? <laughs> I was a little child studying this stuff, y'all. I was opening my Bible. I was a little child reading this stuff. And why didn't he just make a chapter on grace? And why didn't he make a chapter, you know, a book, right, on love? You know why? Because these demons would have took it out. And then they could have made, uh, now this was a thing, don't throw nothing at me. They, they made a slave Bible where they took out certain passages, right? Because they didn't want the slaves to know <laughs> about the liberty that comes through Christ. They didn't want them getting any ideas in their head about freedom. And about how we all won in Christ. They didn't want them getting that idea either. What you mean we won? We don't have to be subjugated to you. That wasn't going to work. So they, so they pulled literal whole books out the Bible and gave them a, a, a another version chopped up to hardly anything. And it, of course it had the passages that said slaves be obedient to your, to your masters. They didn't take that out, of course. So this is what men do. The Bible says they withhold the truth in unrighteousness. So God said, I'm going to fix it where I'm going to put this all throughout smatterings of his truth, of his grace, of his mercy, of uh, different doctrines all throughout. So they couldn't do it. They, they can pull stuff out, but you still find it other places. Oh, God know what he was doing. Don't play with God. He confounded the devil. Hebrews 7.25, wherefore he is able. Who is the he? We best know it's Jesus. Also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Drives me bananas. That don't sound like a God that can't do it. That don't sound like a feudal Christ to me. It says he's able. And you know what? Believers believe. They believe he's able and they trust in that. They cling to that. They rely on that. Another, where was that? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go there. Ooh, see, I thought I was going to hide that one for myself, too. I actually put that one in my notes. Job well done. Praise the Lord. Jude, <laughs> chapter 1, there's only one. Jude, verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Let me help you out with that. It ain't the person in the mirror. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our savior. Oh, wait, I thought Jesus wasn't God. Oops. There's another one. They forgot to erase to the only wise God, our savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And an alleluia goes right there. Oh, yes. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you one of the redeemed? Yes, I am. And it wasn't by a feudal Christ. It was by the one who is more than enough. It is by the one that the father sent into the world to save it. The father sent the son to be the savior of the world. The is the definite article. It means that one and no other. The one true and most high King Jesus. Where is that scripture? I was just looking at it. Psalm 2410, and I'm going to be reading from the Septuagint because we done found out that Maserites was busy, honey. Yeah, they was up to no good. Psalm 2410. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is this king of glory. That's Jesus, y'all. Whether people want to admit it or not, that's Jesus. <laughs> Let's see. Was it David? David said it. They re David said it in Psalms, and then it's repeated in Hebrews, I believe, where he said, "And the Lord said unto my Lord, Let me go find it before I get into trouble. Hold on." Give me one minute. I didn't know I was going there. We got Psalm 110. And Jesus even mentioned this when he walked this earth. <laughs> he confounded them. <laughs> oh, okay. Psalm 110. And what verse is that? Please don't do it to me. Yeah, start at verse one. Uh, let's see. I always get this mixed up here. I think in the Masoretic text it's one o nine one. No, in the Septuagint it's one o nine one. I get this twisted up because it has a in parentheses here to let us know. Because it it's either one o nine one, depending on what Bible you're reading. Or one ten one, I'm not going to even try to get confused on it right now. Okay, the Lord said unto my Lord, "Sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool." What? What do you mean? The Lord said unto my Lord, "Oh, you know the second person of the Godhead, the first person of the Godhead said to the second person of the Godhead, you know they pretend this stuff ain't in the Bible, and this is in the Old Covenant." Oh, I guess I guess they just take their white out and just. Psh, Shh, don't tell nobody that's <laughs> and we're gonna pretend that that's not in here let me go over here where is that in hebrews before i get hurt here <laughs> let's see is that hebrews don't say Hebrews computer. Don't you start tripping on me now. Yeah, Hebrews chapter one. Hebrews, pay attention. <laughs> one thirteen. Uh in the wrong Bible for that. That's the Septuagint. Doesn't have the New Testament, Lisa. Okay. Hebrews chapter one. Verse 13. For one, let's start at verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he in any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all of the angels of God worship him this is 
the Father commanding all of the angels of God, not some, not most, not many, all, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Worship is reserved for God alone. <laughs> oh my goodness. Verse 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son he saith, unto who? This is the father speaking to the son. Thy throne, O God. I'm sorry, all of y'all who say Jesus is not God, you missed another one. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. I could preach on that for a second, but I'm not going to go there right now. I heard somebody twist something all out of whack it back. And no, they didn't put it back in the right place with, ugh, don't even get me started. That is the scepter. Is his, a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his kingdom. Nothing else. Strange teachings out there in this world. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. This is the Father talking to the Son. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as doth the garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. You know the other scripture, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And oh, aren't you glad? <laughs> aren't you glad that our Savior remains faithful and true? That we can rely on him. I am the Lord, I change not. Thank you, Lord. But to which of the angels said he in time, any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We just read that over there in Psalms. Are they not all ministering spirits? It's talking about the angels sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The Bible tells us he didn't take on the nature of angels right here in Hebrews. How did the Jehovah's Witnesses get that wrong? Now they play like. They don't really say, oh, no, we don't believe he's an angel. Yeah, they do. They're not telling the truth. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to get back to my other points here. So we know Jesus is God. We just saw a bunch of that smatterings of that. And it's all throughout the scripture. The king of glory. Thank you, Lord. The next thing that these silly folk with silly doctrines now open up their Bible, blow the dust off it, open it up and take a look. Stop doing that where you just believe what other people say and parrot what they say and it be error and wrong. Please open up the book and take a look. Easy believism. Ugh. Our Lord himself said that his yoke was easy and his burden was light. He talked over and over and over again when he walked this earth about simply believing in him, simply trusting in him, simply placing our faith in him. If we did not believe, we would likewise perish. He said these things over and over again. And then they call it these agents of Satan. Easy believism. And then sadly, people who don't know their Bible, because we don't even realize the influence that Roman Catholicism has had in infiltrating so many other doctrines. They make it all about works. And there's only one work that saves, and that's the work of Christ on Calvary, what he did. And we have to believe in that work because we could do nothing. The Lord literally said, without me, <laughs> you can do nothing. 
but that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Oh, I'm going to preach on Matthew 7 one day because I'm so I am so done with these Romanists that have taken that and beaten the church over the head with it when he is not talking about believers. Ain't no believers standing there going, Lord, Lord. Oh, those are all unbelievers that was trusting in their works. That's why that's what they pointed to. And then he says at the end, when they get done lying, okay, I'm going to preach on a little bit. I'm just going to do it. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name many wonder, do many wonderful works. Then shall he say to them, what? I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The reason he declares first, I never knew you is because they was never, they was not saved, lost. They was never saved. How do people miss this? He didn't go, well, I knew you once, but you fell away. Well, uh, you know, you did get saved when you was a child, but then you fell into darkness and you lost your way. And never came back and never truly repented of all your sin. He don't say that. He said, I never knew you. They was never saved. So you got people pointing to their works. Every false way in the earth points to their works. He said, but wait a minute, wait a minute. They, they was casting out devils. All right. Let's use Hollywood's example. Y'all remember that movie they put out? What was in the 70s? Oh, that was a demonic movie. Oh, wicked. Hollywood is wicked. The Exorcist. There are people that ain't saved to go try to cast out devils. People go to voodoo doctors and all kind of stuff. Shamans and all. Well, my daughter or my son or even me, I got a demon and I need it out. They don't come to the Lord. See how they Jedi mind trick you to make you think that that's Christians? I can't with these folk. It's right there in the passage. Open the book and take a look. He says, I never knew you. So there's people that cast out devils. There's people that lay hands and they ain't saved. I can't. So they try to make it about believers. That great white throne judgment is when all them unbelievers they are standing before the living God in his majesty and in his glory. And it will be undeniable. They going to be trembling because off somewhere they going to see that too is the lake of fire. And ain't going to be denying him. Then we preaching and telling these folk, Jesus is real. Jesus is the truth. You better get saved. You better run to Christ. And they don't want to hear it. They got everything else. 10,000 other things that they are entertained with. So the devil can suck their lives away because it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment is coming. We want to see him saved at the judgment. At the beam of seat. We don't want them at the great white throne. That ain't the one you want to be at. And they going to say, Lord, Lord, they're not going to be able to deny it then. All these blaspheming devils. Some save with compassion. It's in Jude right there too. Some save with fear, making a difference. Some of these people need to be warned. There is fire. And they going to go into it if they don't have Christ. Whether you want to believe they're going to burn up or not, they're going to go into fire. Heaven is only for those who receive the Lord. And you have to receive the gospel. I can't do nothing to save myself. Nothing. 
like a little child. A little child can do nothing for themselves. Absolutely nothing. They are 100% reliant upon their parent or the loved one that's taking care of them. We have to cast ourselves upon him with reckless abandon. Jesus, I can't save myself. Save me. It is the once completed, never to be repeated, finished work of Christ. And these blasphemers, they don't even realize. Many of them are so sad they're in darkness. They think they got to do something. Well, I know he went on Calvary for me, but. I've got to make sure I, you got to make sure you what? We, you are either crucified with him, which he did. Cause uh, I don't know. You got a time machine in your pocket. Cause I don't have one in mine. We believe. And then we are counted in his death, burial and resurrection. Then we're crucified with him. As I heard one preacher say, it was a uh, Ralph Yankee Arnold. I ain't got no sense to pay for. They're all under the blood. And this is what's so sad and tragic that the only sin these people are actually going to go to hell for is the rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because they would not go under the blood through faith in him. Their sin remains. And now, you know, what's kind of strange, but it's, if you look at the whole synopsis of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation to the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, they getting what they wanted. They wanted to pay for their own sin. They want to prove that they could do it. Well, be careful what you wish for. Don't mock God and deny the provision that he has made. The way of escape is Christ. The perfect lamb was slain. The Bible don't say behold yourself. He say behold the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Behold the lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. This is what the Bible says. Well, what was he slain for? These people mock his grace. No, it ain't greasy grace. It's amazing grace. Blasphemers. Get me started. Oh, crush the lies of the devil tonight. I don't care if they coming from the pulpit or for people who name the name of Christ. Let's say you don't show the proper respect and honor for Jesus. You need to close your mouth. It's wrong and we need to say it's wrong. License to sin. Living like the devil. You can't live like the devil and be saved. What? I don't even know how these people pull this mess off. First of all, it's because they, they appeal to the mindset of a person being steeped in their own self-righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. Does the Bible not say so? Let me find that scripture because people have like, never heard that before. Let's see. We got Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. I'm reading from the Masoretic text right now. I just pulled it up real quick. So there's one, Isaiah 64, and it's also in the New Testament. It's repeated. Let's see if I can find it. Can't find it right now. Sometimes these search engines aren't the greatest. <laughs> I didn't know I was going there. A thousand pardons, y'all. I'll find it. I'll put the link in the description. 
The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. I just gave you one passage. We need his righteousness. There is none that do it good. This is how they get folk. There is none good but God. If it wasn't for his grace, none of us would make it. Not a one. Do you know there are some people in this earth that actually believe, oh, I'd make it. I I, I, I would make it. A, I don't believe anything you're saying. This is ridiculousness. Of course I would make it. I'm one of the elect. God looked down and said, oh, you're just so sweet. And you're just so wonderful. I'm picking you because you're so amazing. The devil is a liar. The Bible says that when we get there, we're going to say thou art worthy. It ain't we are worthy. We stink. We're little stink weeds. But see, people, people don't want to believe. Don't you tell me I stink. Okay. God forbid you don't shower for just a little bit. Just, just a couple of days. Try it. You'll stink. We stink. We are corrupt through and through. In our flesh dwells no good thing. If it wasn't for the power of God, he figured out a way to come and dwell in temples not made with hands. I still am astonished. Because when we were saved, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is. It don't matter what it looked like. If he in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, stop, look, let, take note, pay attention. All things have become new. This is why we are admonished to renew our mind on the word of God. So we can begin to put away the thoughts, precepts, attitudes of the old man. And here's where the devil slides in. Here's where the serpent comes. Oop. I got to keep them from being effectual. I got, I can't have another Jesus dynamo kicking my behind. When the Lord said, I given you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He can't. No, I can't. Oh, not another head crusher. I know I'll give them entertainment. Oh, good. He's a sports fan. I'm not picking on men. She's a sports fan. Oh, good. When football season comes around, they'll spend 12 hours watching that instead of reading the Bible and preaching the gospel and sharing faith. They'll be too tired to do anything else after they work a 40 or 50 hour a week chasing that money. So, okay, I hit him with this. Oh, okay. They're into martial arts. Great. I'll pull them into that. Oh, they into NASCAR. I'll pull them into that. Oh, they into. And it's to keep us from being effectual for Christ. It's to keep the world in darkness so they won't receive Christ. Are we seeing how the game is played? Are we going to then be stirred up to be about our father's business? Because the most important message in the world is not flat earth. It is not chemtrails. It is not underground military bases. It is not aliens. It is not none of that crap because none of it is going to save a man from damnation. It's are you saved? If you died tonight, are you going to heaven or hell? Has Jesus saved your soul from damnation? The most important message is that Christ was crucified, buried, resurrected on the third day for the full and complete payment for your sin, for my sin. And if you will place your faith and trust in him, you will be delivered from damnation. That is the most important message. We got one job. Jesus didn't say go ye in all the world and preach about the flat earth. He said go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. Do you know in the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, it says that the angel that comes is going to be preaching the everlasting gospel of the kingdom. 
There's, there's only one message. And it has been the message from the beginning. Right there at the fall, the virgin birth is prophesied. The Old Testament saints believed on the promised Messiah. It's right here in the book. The book of Hebrews declares it. In other places, Jesus himself said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. That is not a metaphor. The reason that Abraham was justified by faith was not because he believed for Isaac. It was because he believed for Jesus coming through Isaac. How do people miss this? You are justified by faith in his son or not at all. There ain't no dual covenant. It's new covenant or no covenant. And the book of Hebrews makes that plain. Hebrews, pay attention. Ain't no other way. Jesus himself declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man, no man, no man. I'm going to keep saying it. 100% Hebrew. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And you better make sure you got the real Jesus, the soul sufficient, all sufficient, only in him, Christ. Because he warned us there be many Christs that were in this world. These false constructs, the Mormons have a Christ. The Muslims have a Christ. The Roman Catholics have a Christ. All kinds of religions have a Christ. But it ain't this Jesus, the very God from very God, who came down in the likeness of sinful flesh to be the full and complete payment for our sins, paid the price and said it is finished to tell us die, paid in full. Believe and you'll be saved. We don't add one work to it. Get your filthy hands off of it, buddy. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16, 31. Now, this is Paul who has declared the gospel. He has given this charge to go all over these different locations. You see it, Romans, Corinthians, Philippians. All these different places that he went. It was the same message. Believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy whole house. Why? When a believer is converted, salvation has come to that home because you're going to come through the door. Guess what I just did today. Jesus saved my soul. No matter what the faith is in that household, whether it's any other false religion or no faith at all, salvation has come to that home. That there is something I have to do to be saved. Yeah, there is something you have to do. Believe. Trust in, cling to, and rely on his finished work. That's it and that's all. And the last one I'm going to talk about in closing. I can lose my salvation. Oh, I can't. I'm just... Uh, how are you going to lose what you couldn't earn? How are you going to lose the gift of God? The Bible says salvation is his gift. Oh, they wish they could remove this. These words, righteous heretics. They wish they could remove Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Let me just go there and I, I'm close. I can't. I'm just, ugh. You feel like you need a shower after you listen to one of these clowns. Oh, excuse me. Wicked, demented circus monkeys. Yeah, that's my new one. Uh, and I'm talking about the agents of Satan now. I'm not talking about people who've been deceived by it. They're parroting the junk that they've heard. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the ones, you know, like th when I showed the picture that Jordan found with John Piper holding up the Freemasonic hand sign. It, it wasn't one that you could guess about this one. You, I don't even know how you bend your fingers to do that. It's like, and proudly holding it up proudly. And so we was warning y'all, some people, 
I'm not just talking about me or Jordan or anybody else in the so-called community that we run here on YouTube. No, I'm talking about all the believers that are connected to the love and light of Christ been warning you about the agents of Satan, just like the Bible does. And no marvel that Satan is able to transform himself into an angel of light and his ministers. Wait, Satan has ministers? Yes, he does. Into ministers of righteousness standing up in these pulpits when they are sold out for Satan. Putting out demonic false doctrines in the world, doctrines of devils. No, I did not forget we're going to Ephesians 2, 8, 9. busted he was busted straight up y'all ought to if i put it in the video the last what one before the last on late night with lisa and friends is in there you can screenshot it and share it to everyone to warn see he false well, we we <laughs> well we telling people that they don't believe it oh no he's just a misguided brother he did they're not brothers Paul said it himself. He said they went out from us because they not of us. That's why they're not preaching the gospel of the Lord's soul sufficiency. Ephesians 2 verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You can show them this. And you know what they do? They can't handle this one. They jump to another lily pad. Okay. Once I try to minister to somebody, if I'm sharing with them the truth about the gospel and I show them the scripture and they decide they're going to jump to some perversion of Jesus trying to show people they needed to come to an end of themselves because of if they want to keep the law, they must be perfect. And they take that out of context and try to see, he was saying you had to do this and you had to do that. He was showing that you couldn't, if you will be honest, that you might falter on that. And then he showed another one. He showed why? Because some people were able to do some things, but not other things. And eventually he came across one that applied to you and applied to me. And we go, yeah, that I do got to, I, yeah, I do struggle with the, yeah, that one's, yeah, that's a tough one. But see, like I keep trying to explain to folk, even if you started today and kept all the laws, statutes, and commandments, you still have a problem because you were all together born in sin. And shaping an iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. You know David said that right. You you certainly don't think you're more righteous than David right. Uh, okay but anyway. So okay so then. Now what do I do. Because I was born in sin. I was shaping an iniquity. I was given this condition. Esdras makes a plea. You know, the book that they took out the Bible and told us that it wasn't Bible. He says. Oh, Adam, what is this thou hast done to us? When thou art fallen or were fallen, you were not fallen alone. This is why the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Because the first one brought sin into the world, brought every man into that condition. Every man that's been born has it. How do we get back to sinless perfection? Guess what? It ain't through works. It's by the Lord's grace and by his beautiful gift. Will you receive it? This is for the person. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but we need to hear it again. So we can just say, thank you, Jesus. All the glory, all the praise, all the honor goes to him for his finished work. Oh, if it don't make you tremble, you ain't thinking about it right. Thank you, Jesus, for what great thing you have done and being obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
Ooh, I tremble. If he didn't give you nothing else, if he didn't give you nothing else, you have everything you need. Be blessed, beloved of the most high God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen. Making way.